This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, it's Tuesday today, which means we're doing a top five list, or more accurately, we're doing part two of a top ten that I began last week, uh, where basically every now and again, just occasionally, every few months or so, a couple of three times a year, basically, I'll do uh, this kind of video on a topic that isn't music or guitar related. I think the last time I did one of these was uh, when I was talking about what makes me laugh my favorite comedians basically um it should be who makes me laugh but anyway it's been a while since i've done one of these so um i thought i'd do my favorite movies last week uh i did um it was only going to be five but i couldn't narrow it down to, to five so um hence why this is part two part one was last week if you missed that i'll link to it down below last week we looked at uh, war movies uh, mysteries science fiction westerns and espionage films and this week we're going to look at um the next five these are not in any kind of order just because one appears earlier or later on the list it doesn't mean that it's kind of better or worse than any of the others these are just the order that they c occurred to me in. and uh, yeah so we dealt with those genres last week let's see what we're dealing with this week the comedy movie genre yeah, now we can talk till the cows come home about what is the second greatest comedy movie ever made. But in my mind, there is no debate whatsoever that this is the greatest. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, coming in in second place might be Life of Brian or it might be uh, Spinal Tap. But this is top of the pile for me. Always has been and always will be. I first saw this uh, movie, um, oh gosh, it'll have been in the early 80s. Um, when in order to, I think, raise funds for a new minibus, uh, the, the school that I went to uh, was having video nights where you could pay 50 pence and stay after school and go into the lecture theatre and watch a movie on a, on a big screen. And uh, I, it might have been even uh, like a, a film that they were showing with a projector rather than, uh, rather than like, you know, a VHS copy or something. But I just remember, I'd never seen anything like this before. I'd never, I never knew comedy could be like this because Monty Python and uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Um, I just never, I'd, I'd watched a couple of episodes and I think it was uh, Terry Jones who said that looking back, you know, uh, people remember the good bits of Monty Python's Flying Circus. You don't necessarily, and you, the classic bits, you know, the, uh, the dead parrot and all that. Um, but you know, there, he says, you know, that there was a lot of filler in those episodes. Um, and maybe I just seen, I just, I wasn't, it was neither here nor there for me. But when I saw this movie, that was like just, it's incredible. I mean, apparently, as well, it was uh, Elvis Presley's favorite movie, and he could, uh, he, he used to sit at presumably where was it in the jungle room or somewhere, you know, kind of uh, doing the dialogue along with the, um, along with the, the characters, you know. So you can imagine Elvis sat there, you know, going, tis but a scratch <laughs> that in, in itself makes the movie more funny if you know i'm sure you've seen this but if you haven't it's a fantastically funny film and the more you watch it the funnier it gets even when you know what the jokes are that are coming um you know it's it's still funny even funny in fact so that's the greatest comedy movie ever made as far as i'm concerned monty python and the holy grail next the crime movie genre. Yeah, now I did have quite a few candidates for the uh, crime genre. Uh, one of which that I nearly included, and it's well worth checking out, is called Welcome to the Punch. It's um, a gritty gangster movie uh, set in London, starring James McAvoy and Mark Strong. And it's, um, yeah, that's a, a good edge-of-your-seat crime thriller. Uh, lots of set-piece action sequences and stuff. Yeah, great, great, great movie. Um, but then I realised, if you're going to talk about crime movies, you have to have a pretty spectacular reason not to include this one. The Godfather. It is by a country mile the um the, the the crime movie that all others are kind of judged against really um you know and just it's amazing how you know 
um, phrases from the from that movie, like you know, he sleeps with the fishes, have entered sort of common parlance. You know, an offer you can't refuse. There's another one. Uh, Marlon Brando is spectacular in this, and um, you know, it's it's interesting to note that Marlon Brando's career was on something of a, a downward spiral. Uh, in the you know, in the in the years before um, he kind of came back, essentially this was in many ways his comeback movie. But yeah, what a performance! And um, you know Al Pacino, fantastic. I mean Al Pacino's kind of quiet menace that he exudes throughout this movie is is just amazing. Um, that scene uh, towards the end where he's um you know in the the christening scene the baptism scene in the church where it keeps cutting to um you know all of uh, all of michael corleone's um you know enemies getting their comeuppance it's just one of the most fantastic pieces of cinematography ever made i think and you know it, it just i mean we can talk about godfather part two yeah and lately said about godfather part three the better i think but you know this original movie here this is the one that disproves the maxim that i was talking about last week that you know um a good book makes a bad movie because the book is excellent and the movie is excellent too it's uh i mean francis ford coppola you know so there you go uh the godfather greatest crime movie ever made next the adventure movie genre yeah now i was going to talk about fantasy films you may recall that towards the end of uh, last week in part one of this video uh, i said that i'd be doing a bunch of different genres this week and one of them was uh, the fantasy genre but then i realized i don't really go for that kind of movie to be honest there's only really one movie of that genre that i um, i really watch uh, mainly for nostalgic reasons because it was a favorite of mine when i was a kid it's the old uh, ray harryhausen animation well live action animation thing jason and the argonauts you know with the sword fighting skeletons and uh, and that big bronze bloke uh, you know um so yeah i, I decided to uh, i'd mention that film so i just have but i'm replacing fantasy with adventure uh the adventure genre uh, basically ripping good yarns with a beginning a middle and an end with strong characters and you know a good story that you can really get your teeth into and enjoy and for me there is none better than this one the man who would be king starring michael kane and sean connery as a pair of uh, ex-soldiers um in india in victorian times and they're they're bored basically their military careers uh, are over and they're still and they seek the thrill and adventure and the adrenaline rush and excitement of uh, their of, of their glory days so they decide to venture north into the mountains and, and see what fortune awaits them there and without giving away any spoilers um yeah it, it all goes rather well for a while and until it doesn't um uh, sean connery becomes um a king there oh excuse me my phone's pinging uh let me just see what that's all about sean connery becomes a king in um in this mountainous kingdom to the north of india and um yeah and they're all set to return to uh, their previous lives richer than solomon and then it all goes horribly wrong, and I'll leave it at that. It's a fantastic film. The performances by Connery and Kane in this movie are absolutely fantastic. You really believe that they are inhabiting these characters. You, you forget that you're watching um, Michael Kane and Sean Connery, and you, you get so, sucked into these two, uh, these two kind of slightly roguish ex-soldiers. Um, you know, in their in their quest for adventure. Fantastic movie. Can't say enough good things about it. Go and watch it if you haven't already seen it. So that is my choice for the best adventure movie, The Man Who Will Be King. Next, the musical movie genre. Yeah, musicals. Um, not really a genre of, of movie that I thought I liked. And then I had a little bit of a think. And I thought, well, actually, there's enough. Uh, there are enough of them that I watch. That, yeah, it, it deserves a category in in this rundown here. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not into, you know, the likes of My Fair Lady and The King and I and, you know, all of Busby Barkley, Golden Age of Hollywood, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, all that sort of stuff. It's not really my cup of tea. Um, but, you know, I grew up with musicals. You know, I think one of the first movies I went to the cinema to see when I was a wee tiny kid was, do you remember that movie that Slade made, In Flame? 
I, have, I haven't watched that in years. I'll have to see if it's uh, available somewhere to, to stream. Um, but, you know, then Grease and Saturday Night Fever, you know, those were the kind of movies that um, that I was watching as a kid, I suppose. Um, I think I went to the to the cinema to see Grease. Um, what else? Well, I suppose you could call um, Spinal Tap a musical comedy, I guess. Uh, what else would there be? Uh, oh, paint your wagon. Now, there's a, there's a great musical. Yeah, anyway. But if we're going to talk about musicals, then this, for me, is a country mile ahead of pretty much all all the competition, the commitments. Uh, when was this? Early 90s, wasn't it? And, you know, again, it's another one of those that I watch multiple times a year. Um, and it's it's largely because of the, the screenplay. Um, I know it's based on a book by the author Roddy Doyle, I think. Uh, but uh, the, the screenplay is what makes this movie. It's it's written by um, two giants of the TV comedy uh, genre, a, a pair of writers called uh, Dick Clement and Ian Lafrenie, who <coughs> wrote many of my favourite TV comedies, um, The Likely Lads, uh, Porridge, uh, Alf Wiedersehen Pet, um, some great shows there. And they all, then they went on to work in, in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, I think the first movie they did was um, that Sean Connery reboot of, of when he kind of came back as James Bond, Never Say Never Again, I think they, they did the screenplay for that. But they also did this. And it's just, you know, for anybody who's ever been in a band and experienced many of the things that I spoke about in that uh, video, things I don't miss about gigging, um, you know, band politics, you know, um, that's that's a big part of what makes uh, this movie so funny. And, you know, it's just incredibly well written, uh, great plot, uh, belly laughs aplenty, but great music in even greater supply, um, you know, and um, Alan Parker, the director of this movie, actually uh, insisted that they didn't kind of lip sync and mime to the, to the music in the film. What you, uh, what you hear when you uh, watch the movie is the actual band that you're seeing playing the music as it's being filmed um fantastic fantastic music great cast great writing what can i tell you my favorite uh, musical film by a long long chalk next the thriller movie genre thrillers yes uh, a wide and varied genre mainly because it can sort of cross pollinate with other genres as well um for example would you describe alien as a science fiction movie or a thriller I think it's both, um, and I nearly chose that one for this category, but given that last week I'd already uh, had a crack at science fiction with, um, you know, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, I thought, yeah, let's let's kind of keep something that is just a, a, a purebred thriller. And I'm talking about this one here, Duel. Uh, Dennis Weaver plays the main character. Um, you know, he of, uh, what was that cop show he was in? McLeod. Anyone remember that? Um yeah, it, it, I mean, if this, I believe, was Steven Spielberg's first uh, feature film, and um, just reading up a little bit about it here, the, uh, the 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 movie magazine thing that I was reading online describes it as being uh, a movie that um, many directors would aspire to being the peak of their career, let alone you know coming out with something like this straight out of the traps. Uh, it dates from 1971, and it's basically Dennis Weaver plays a, a kind of businessman on a road trip, driving across uh, the dust, dusty kind of open plains of Middle America, and um, you know th th this kind of big uh, juggernaut, this big articulated lorry, big truck starts tailgating him, and what what starts off as an annoyance becomes a very very dangerous indeed. We never see the truck driver. We don't know what his motivation is for basically wanting to uh, to murder Dennis Weaver's character. We we don't know anything about it other than this is um, a duel to the death. And well, if you haven't seen it, I won't tell you how it ends. Um, but there is um, a decisive outcome. Let's put it that way. And 
Yeah, it's you, you don't know what's going on, which is part of it. You, you feel the confusion that the main protagonist, Dennis Weaver, uh, is is feeling. It's uh, you're puzzled by it, and that's what makes it all the more uh, terrifying. Really, uh, it's brilliantly shot. It's brilliant. It's a fantastically paced movie. It's not, you know, um, something that uh, drags or. You know, kind of, you, you feel like when are they going to get on with it? Or, or you know, the, it, he knows just exactly where to pitch the tension um, all the way through this movie. It is absolutely fantastic. You you never know to the end uh, what this, what the, uh, why this car chase or truck car chase um, was instigated. You just don't know. You just know that it's incredibly exciting and you, you're on the edge of your seat watching it and uh, hoping that um, hoping that the, the, the good guy wins anyway that is my choice for my favorite thriller movie and so concludes my list of 10 movies that i think are amongst the best ever made you can feel free to agree or disagree with uh, my choices uh, if you missed last week's video where i went down um, the war genre mystery sci-fi western and spy or espionage genres then i'll link to that down in the description but that is pretty much the video for today folks let me know what you think about my choices in the comments and uh if you've enjoyed what you've seen why not hit the subscribe button and uh the notification bell and don't forget to drop me a like as well while you're at it but for now i'll bid you all a good day oh don't forget the live stream every friday 5 p.m uk time where we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and as i suspect this week uh, movies as well so yeah great way to keep off the weekend uh, 5 p.m uk time every friday beer and chat basically great way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now <laughs>